All right, hi there. It's Adrian here. So I'm uh, making a little video. You get to see me for once and uh, my bench here. So uh, videos about my my oscilloscope here. This is a, a Rigol. Oh, Regal. I actually know it's called pronounced Regal. A Regal DS1052E, common, good scope. Um, basically, you know. Back in the day, this was the ultimate in low-cost scope, and it served me well. Um, it's useful. I don't use it a whole lot, but I do use it from time to time, and it's definitely very helpful. But I figured it was time to treat myself. Um, so I ordered something. Here it is. Brand new in box. And interestingly enough, here I, I live in Portland, Oregon, and... Uh, Regal, this came from Regal North America, North America's distribution center. Their sales and distribution center is in Portland. <laughs> it's actually in Beaverton, which is just a suburb 10 minutes away from downtown Portland. So they shipped this to me. I didn't realize that I could have driven there probably to pick it up. But uh, of course it shipped and uh, came to me. But I, I did give them a call to check on my order status. And, and he was the guy who was like, oh yeah, oh I see you're just in downtown, which is where I work. Uh, yeah, you'll have it tomorrow. So, anyways, um, let's just open this up, and we'll see what this is. I don't think it will take um, too many brain cells to figure out probably what this is. Scope probes. Manual. Cardboard. USB cord. And here we go. Get rid of the box. So yes, I have ordered and received uh, a Regal 1054Z or Z, depending on where you're from. And there it is. Um, yeah, let's uh, reposition the camera. All right, so here's my trusty 1052E. It's a good scope, 50 megahertz, one gig of sample per second, two channels, external trigger on the front. It's pretty nice. Um, so I don't really need to talk too much about this scope, put the handle down there, because everyone sort of knows about it and, uh, you know, it's been reviewed at nauseum on the internet. And then uh, oh, let me move the 1054 back. And here is the new one. So. I won't go into detail again on this scope either because, of course, there's a million reviews about it. Um, but out of the box, uh, it costs $399 US. This is sh shipped directly from Regal uh, North America. So full warranty support. And of course, if there's service, it's really easy to get service, at least in the US. Other countries, your mileage will might vary. But um, it's a 50 megahertz, four channel scope, still one giga sample per second. There are a lot of software options on this scope to upgrade it to all the way up to 100 megahertz, deep memory, all sorts of other great things. It is four channel, but they are using a single DAC. So of course, when you use all four channels, your you know your sample speed is quartered. <laughs> Typical on a, on like the old scope here on the 1052, you're halving your sample speed. But anyways, you know the biggest detail, the biggest difference for me is the four channels is fantastic. The larger screen, which is just huge comparatively, and it's much higher resolution. I think the old one is 320 by 240. This one is what, 848 by 480. So widescreen, you know, has a lot of on-screen menus. So it's not like your, your waveform display is that much bigger. But the biggest thing about the new scope, besides tons of new features, like all sorts of advanced triggering and decoding and things like that that you couldn't do on the old one, is it has that in the intensity waveform display, basically, which makes the waveform display look a lot more like it did on the analog scopes. It's anti-aliased, it's much clearer looking, it's just so much better to look at. It's a little bit slow. Let's plug it in, actually. Sorry, while I fiddle around. All right. 
Oh, maybe because I was not putting it into where the power connector is. All right, so physical power switch, which I always like. It's a little bit quieter than in the old one, I'd say. But anyways, um, yeah, I I did open this up and play around with it already, and I have to say <laughs> I'm loving it. You know, Dave Jones and lots of other people say this is a really good scope. It's for the price, you pretty much can't beat it. I mean, to get a really fully functional scope, there it is. Um, you know, with intensity grading, it's just fantastic. A lot of the other ones that are in the same price range just can't compete in that respect. So let's see here. Let's hook up. Actually, we'll just, uh, I don't know what's going on here. Oh, the triggering is not happening, that's why. So, yeah, let's see. We go to the acquire menu. I mean, it's not a great example because, uh, you know, this is the in, in five millivolts per division here, there with averaging turned on. But, you know, I, you can watch all the other reviews. Uh, one of the other things about it is it's just not the fastest scope in the world. Like the, the user interface speed is pretty good, but when you do move the waveform around, it sort of stops updating, as you can kind of see in this right now. Uh, so that's not, at least when you move the trigger, it doesn't stop the waveform update, but as you can see the trigger line, it's nice that the little mark does stay on the screen. Um, you know, it's a bit slow. And it has some kind of acceleration going on on the uh, knobs. I mean, maybe not. Uh, yeah, like right there. It, it jumped all the way to the far side. So, I don't know. It's a bit funky. But you know what? It's all about getting used to it. I just love how high res the screen is, though. I, I think it's just so clear. It's still small. It feels solid. Like, it's just built wonderfully. It comes with four... What are these 100 megahertz passive probe? Same ones that came on the other scope. And the thing is, um, let's just see if I back up the camera. I'm, there we go. Size comparison. Basically, it's a tiny bit wider, yet look at the screen difference. I mean, that alone is just fantastic. This makes really good use of the screen real estate. Really high res, you know, small fonts, and a really nice look. The thing about the UI on some of these uh, Chinese manufactured and designed scopes is the user interface, it, it just didn't spend any effort on it. It doesn't look nice. It's really basic looking. Um, I've definitely seen some reviews online that that's the case. Not that that necessarily matters. It's like, does that affect the operation of the scope? Not necessarily, but it's still nice that the design theme of this scope, which has these sort of, you know, angles, like kind of curves and angles, is it's replicated within the user interface. I mean, you see like the, that we're on channel one, it's got the, the angles, it kind of matches the angles visible here. I don't know, I just, I think they did a really good job considering this is a very cheap scope to essentially make it look really good. So I give them points for that. The interface seems really good, except for the, you know, that it'd be nice if these knobs were a little better with the, you know, if they were a little more sensitive, not sensitive is the right word, they were just more accurate. But you can push them to center, which I do have to say I like a lot. Oh, that didn't work so great. But um, yeah, overall, I am I'm a fan. I'm a big fan. And compared to this 1052, which you know was a good scope, is a good scope. I will be selling this, of course. It's not going to go to waste. There's no point for me to keep it anymore. It's basically in perfect condition. It just is a little bit dusty but otherwise it's, it's perfect. So I'll sell this. And I was looking online and these still good, you know, you still get decent money for these and that's a good thing. So, uh, you know, the overall outlay for the new scope won't be that much, but I get tons of new features. And that to me is very exciting. Here's the scope in its final resting place. Looks good, fits well in that spot, which is perfect. It's uh, while I'm working, it's an easy reach. I'm not sitting up to my workbench properly, but it's a nice, easy reach. Can activate all the features and stuff. Yeah, I'm loving it. Good job, Regal.
for making such a great scope and making it so affordable for regular people like me, who's a pure hobbyist who has no actual skill, well, very little, <laughs> that I can actually use a fun scope. You know, use one that has amazing features. They have really kind of push the, the boundaries of what a cheap scope can do feature wise. And I think that that right there is just amazing. Strangely, if you go into, it's the math menu here. Well, you probably can't see too much, but this is where the decoding is. And, um, you know, it does RS-232, I squared C and SPI bus decoding. Uh, you know, it's the plus models of these uh, 10 of these DS 1000s that give you the, you know, mixed signal here with the digital inputs. This one, there is no plus model. Plus models are about 100 bucks extra. Honestly, I have a, if they had a plus model of this, I probably would have bought it. The uh, the DS 1054 Z Plus, you know, that would have had the port here. Um, there's also an S version of these that gives you, I think, a signal, like a synthesizer, up to 25 megahertz or something like that built in as well. But the mixed signal would have been handy. But, you know, to be honest, if I'm truly decoding things, I can just use one of the USB ones. It is nice to have it all in one, though. But anyways, so there you go. I won't go on too much longer. I'm just excited about my new toy. I can't wait to play around with it and give it some tests and, you know, see how it works for me. And, I mean, I've never actually tried decoding anything on, like, SPI bus before. So how cool is that going to be? Anyways, thanks for watching. Give me a thumbs up if you found this interesting at all. Bye-bye.